Hi, I'm Jakub Prota and I'm a senior software engineer at Relay. Today I'm going to talk about the trustworthy decision management and how you can increase the trustness of your decision models using Trusty AI capabilities. I'm going to talk about Trusty AI in a few minutes, but first of all, let me quickly introduce business automation for those who are not familiar with it. Business automation was born because some businesses simply needed to automatize processes. And the goal was to uh, increase the efficiency and control the costs over the organization. Think about it. If you have a decision or a process that follow a standard workflow and that you can automatize, you would like to focus only on the problem itself and not on the technology. The business value is your decision and not the runtime or the development of such decision and the maintenance of such decision model. For that reason, over the years, some standards have been developed so that you can just focus on the model definition uh, and not on the technology that runs it. In the, in the industry, we have some standards. So for example, for processes, we have BPMN, for decisions, we have DMN, and for rules, we have DRL and rules in general. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on DMN only. Red Hat strongly believes in open source and open standards. And business automation products have been built on top of such standards. And the idea behind these, pro these products is to provide a generic runtime for business automation resources, so BPMN, DMN, and DRL. Those products are perfectly integrated and they enable really a lot of new scenarios with this combination. And in particular, um, I'm going to focus on DMN and PMML. PMML is a standard to, for the serialization of machine learning models. You can start with your data, train your machine learning model with the language, with the tool that you prefer, and simply export it into a PMML file. You don't have to be an expert of PMML, so it's just how you're going to store the model. It doesn't impact the training of the model at all. Once you've exported the, 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 your machine learning model, you can then import it again with the same tool, but also with other tools written in other languages. So your model has become portable and the training is now completely decoupled from the runtime because you can train your model with Python, with R, with whatever language and execute it in production with another language, for example, because the, the service will simply uh, import the PMML file uh, and, and execute it. And once you, ex you have exported your PMML model, it can be simply be called by a DMN decision. And this integration between DMN and PMML enables a lot of scenarios because it combines the capability of both standards. It also supports the soft connection between departments, between the same company. So the communication channel are now the standards and both parts do not need to be technology dependent because the, the business analyst that gets, for example, a PMML model is, doesn't really need to know how that model was trained and what was the language, what was the data, because it, it is a portable model at the end of the day. Red Hat started 20 years ago with business automation, so it has a lot of experience. And a few years ago, Red Hat started a new brand project called Cogito um, to build 
business automation microservices. Cogito is the next generation cloud native business automation solution provided by Red Hat. And it's built on top of Corpus and Spring Boot if you want to use it with support both. Roughly speaking, Cogito is the runtime for your business models, DPM, DMM, and DRM. It's super easy to use and also to consume because you just create a new Cogito project, which is a Java project at the end of the day. You take your business models and you put them inside the project. You just compile the project and Cogito will generate the microservice for you and it's ready to be consumed. It is already integrated with all the top-notch technologies for microservices. So Knative, Kubernetes, OpenShift, Kafka, Grafana and Prometheus for monitoring and many, many others. But now we get to the point. Can you trust your decision? Because the standards are not enough anymore. In the last years, many companies faced reputational damages due to machine learning usage. And in this example, it's just an example, uh, an Amazon tool was biased against women, but there are plenty actually of examples like this uh, that impacted all the big companies, but also small companies. And not only, uh, there are also some regulations like GDPR that make some, some constraints and uh, are making things even more, um, even more complicated for production environments. Since we are dealing with decision models and in particular machine learning for business automation, uh, it is necessary now that decision services are monitorable, uh, auditable and explainable. Usually, there are different personas involved in business automation. So, for example, we might have data scientists that have a very good knowledge from a technical perspective, uh, but they might have a limited knowledge on the business domain. On the other side, we have the business analyst who has a very good knowledge of the use case, but maybe he doesn't have that uh, good knowledge of uh, the machine learning model that has been used, or anyway, technical knowledge. Of course, this is not always true, but in general it is, so take it as it is. And as a matter of fact, it's easier to explain simple models rather than complex ones. Usually, complex models can solve complex problems. Uh, with very high performances, but they are black boxes and they are hard to explain. So we have a trade-off uh, uh, between the explain explanation of a complex model and its performances. I've been working for some years for an in uh, insurance company and we were trying to find some new variables to improve the risk score calculation. And we used machine learning, very complex machine learning models. Uh, but when we talked to our colleagues that were doing the traditional risk score, um, they, talk, uh, they, they said that they already tried some complex machine learning models, but the main problem was the regulator. So the regulator is a person from the government agency uh, whose job is to check that insurance companies are not discriminating anybody, uh, that they are following some strict rules and, for example, that the margin of your, um, of your risk model is not biased and it's not against the, um, the interests of the policyholders, for example. And they used J GLM for 30 years a machine learning model uh, because it was really simple to explain and it was not possible to use a complex one because it was not possible to explain it. If we improve the explanation of such models, it will be likely to be used to be 
more adopted in the industries. TrustDI is an initiative from Red Hat started two years ago, and its goal was to add capabilities to business automation services. TrustDI is in the ecosystem of Cogito and together with some other services. The features that Trusty AI aims to add um, to decision services are monitoring, tracing, and accountability and explanation. And let's quickly go through them. So the first one is the business monitoring. Um, based on your model, we provide some metrics uh, that are dependent to your decisions. So for example, if you think about the risk score calculation, uh, a possible metric could be the average price for the, for the request. So, and another one might be the average age uh, of the requests, for example. So those are metrics that are really dependent to your model and they are automatically generated. So this is the nice thing. So we provide the, a generic runtime, but also a generic uh, analysis uh, of your model. The, we have another kind of metrics, uh, which are the operational metrics, and they are more DevOps oriented. So it, they, they are used to check that the application is running fine and it's healthy, for example. So that the response time of the request uh, are within a particular range or, for example, the number of requests over a one minute average and so on. The second feature is the accountability and, uh, and the tracing. So we keep track of all the executions of your model. And for each, for each execution, it is possible to drill down to each, part, each specific input and output. So for each execution, we provide the input, the outputs, the intermediate decisions, uh, the model that was used to evaluate that particular decision, and the explainability for that execution. We provide two kinds of explanations. The first one is line which stands for local interpretable model agnostic explanation. And it can be applied to any model that, uh, so it fits uh, perfectly our purposes. Um, it provides a feature important chart. Um, and the explanation is calculated as following. So a data set is built starting from the original execution perturbing some inputs and keeping fixed some others. All of those execution are then stored and the result is stored and a linear classifier is trained uh, by labels. So to understand what were the most influencing features uh, that impacted the original decision. So for example, in this slide, we see that the the children is a very important feature for the original uh, for the original execution but for example the age was not the second type of explanation is the counterfactual and this kind of explanation uh, aims to provide explainability by examples so for example let's take the mortgage approval use case a customer requests a mortgage and the mortgage is rejected. We might wonder, what do we have to change so to get the mortgage approved? So we set the desired outcome, which is the mortgage is approved. And we also set some constraints on the inputs. So for example, I cannot change my age, of course. So that one must be fixed. But for example, I can change the total amount of money that I request because maybe uh, I cannot request $100,000, but I can request, I don't know, 80,000. And with the 80,000, um, it, it gets approved. So I let the total amount of money uh, to, to vary 
And let's see if a uh, counterfactual is found. So now we, we get to the deal and our use case is the mortgage approval. So the customer requests a mortgage, the mortgage is rejected and we put the hat of the caseworker and we do some analysis and we try to understand what happened. So we have to start with the DMM model, of course. So we have some inputs here. So the age, the monthly salary, the total asset, the total amount of money that, uh, that are required, that are requested, and the number of installments. And those are the inputs of this risk score decision, which is basically calling the PMML, uh, the PMML file that we are using here, which is a random forest model. This random forest model should provide a number between 0 to 100. 0 if the risk score is very low and 100 it's if uh, very high. And you see here that this risk score uh, number is then the input of this mortgage approval um, decision. And it's basically a decision table. So if the risk score is below 40, then the mortgage is approved. Otherwise, the mortgage is not approved. I've already um, exported this DMN model and I've already created a new Cogito application and I also deployed within the Tresty AI infrastructure. So if you would like to know more about how to create this DMN model, how uh, I created the PMML file, how I trained the model, and how I created the Cogito application and deployed the Tresty AI infrastructure, I will provide all the resources in the, in the slides and very briefly, if you would like to know uh, to, to reproduce this particular demonstration, just go to my GitHub account under the Tresty AI ODSC West repository, and you will find all the steps. Um, and if you would like to try to build the Cogito application by yourself, uh, there is another repository always under my GitHub account, which is called From Data to Cogito Demo. And if you would like to do it step by step, uh, I have another presentation uh, at, the, at the Key Live, which is our community, uh, community channel, and it's 45 minutes. So if you would like to, to have a look and comment it, if you need any help, uh, just feel free to write in the comments or to reach out directly to us. We have uh, an open chat on Zulit. So, Okay, uh, now we can um, try to execute a, a decision using this DMN model. So the Cogito application uh, is running under localhost 8080. And here we have this Woggy UI that we can use to interact with the, with the service. And here we see that Cogito has created an endpoint uh, called my mortgage because the DMN model was called my mortgage and we can check it out. So for example, we can evaluate the DMN model using those inputs. So the age is 20, the monthly salary is 2000, the total asset 50,000 and the total amount of money 100,000 and uh, the number of installments is 150. So we execute it and let's have a look at the response. We see that the risk score is 43 and the mortgage was not approved because the risk score was above 40. Now we can go to the trusty, to the trusty UI. The trusty UI is running under localhost uh, 1338 uh, and let's reload the page because uh, of course no executions uh, were, uh, were, were calculated before I executed it. And you see here that we have one execution uh, for, of the my mortgage DMN model 
uh, the date is one minute ago and the execution status was complete because it was evaluated successfully from an operational perspective. We can drill down to the, to the, to the execution and let's see what, were the, what was the outcomes, the inputs and the models and etc. And you, you remember, we had two decisions. So there is score and the mortgage approval decision. And you see, we have two outcomes, the risk score and the mortgage approval. And we can see um, the, both the results. Then we can drill down to the details of, uh, of the outcomes. We can select it with this menu. So let's have a look, first of all, at the risk score. And we see that those were the influencing inputs. So all the inputs were relevant for this decision and it makes sense because, um, of course, I created the, the PMML model, so I know it. And all the, all the features were relevant for, for the risk score calculation. And here we see also the inputs, of course, of this decision. And if we go to the mortgage approval, you see here that um, the mortgage approval was not uh, was not approved, and the input for this particular decision was the risk score. So we can see uh, all the intermediate inputs for all the decision, and this is really interesting. And we can have a look again at the input data uh, of the model. We can do the model lookup. So, for example, you see here, we, we have the model that uh, has been used to evaluate the decision. And now uh, we go to the counterfactual analysis. So, as I said, we can set up the desired outcome. For example, let's um, let's leave the risk score to, to be adjusted automatically because of course if I keep this risk score fixed I cannot get the mortgage approved because you know if I keep risk score equals to 33 this will never change so I leave it to, to be adjusted automatically with this check uh, with this uh, check and I would like to get to have my mortgage approved. So I set it to true, confirm. And now I can set some constraints on the inputs. So for example, um, you know, I cannot change my age. So I leave it as it is, meaning that um, it ma uh, the counterfactual must have age equals to 20. Let's try to change the number of installments. I can set a constraint and the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is um oh sorry not the number of installments but the total amount of money that i require so here constraints is zero and the maximum value is the same of the request so 100,000. i apply it and then i can simply run the counterfactual this is, you see here, this is going to, to be run for one minute and uh, it will find the best results that it can find in within one minute. We have just to wait a little bit and you see here a new, a new intermediate result was found, but it will keep trying to find better results if possible. So, but in this very moment, you know, uh, if I request 96,000 uh, 96, uh, 96, more or less uh, my mortgage will be approved so let's see if there is a better result but i don't think so so we just wait until the time out and and then that's it so you see, all right, the best um, counterfactual, you see here, it was found 96,000, 
but of course 97,000 was better because it was closer to the original request and it was found so this is the best result uh, that it could find um, to get the mortgage approved let's try it so we go back to the to this Woki UI and let's try with 97,000 and you see here now that the mortgage was approved so this was the counterfactual analysis here you can find all the resources uh, with the with some new videos with all the trace the AI introductions and and all the rest so thank you very much for for attending and waiting for your questions.